Okay, we're going to start talking about efficiency of algorithms and complexity of algorithms, uh, which you'll certainly study if you're a computer science major in a 300 level course, but it's important to understand the basic growth of functions here uh, as we move on in discrete math. Um, there's several ways to measure the efficiency. We're going to focus this semester just on the big O notation. Uh, and use, we use the big O notation to classify algorithms based on the number of operations or comparisons they use. Now there's all sorts of complexity we can study. We can study uh, space complexity, time complexity. We're going to try to keep things simple, just get an overall sense of the concept here. The idea behind this which is, is actually very similar to something you would have seen with um, horizontal asymptotes in um, a college algebra course, is to notice that for very large values of x, functions like x squared, 3x squared plus 25, 4x squared plus 7x plus 10, once x gets really, really large, if x was something like a million or a billion, 3 million or 3 billion is not that far off from a million. And adding 25 to a, a number like a million squared or a billion squared is really going to be insignificant. So when x gets really large, all three of these functions are basically going to act the same, they're going to be very similar, and we would consider them of the same order, order x squared. Okay? The O here is a big O, it's an uppercase O, and it's used to represent the order. Basically we're considering all of these a family of functions on the order of x squared. Okay? And it shouldn't be a surprise that the highest exponent here is x squared, and if you're given a bunch of polynomial functions, it'll be later established that the highest degree of the polynomial function determines the order of the function. Okay. Here's the formal definition of big O notation, and by big O we mean this uppercase O. So we can say that f of x is on the order of g of x if there exists constants, we call these witnesses, uh, c and k, such that f of x absolute value is always less than or equal to a constant c times the absolute value of g of x whenever x is greater than k. The way to think about this is that if you can come up with a constant so that once you go far enough down the x-axis, g of x multiplied by that constant is always bigger than f of x, right? then we can say basically that g of x dominates f of x, and you could say that f of x is on the order of g of x. Okay? So up here I gave sort of a, a loose explanation as to why x squared and 3x squared plus 5 are essentially going to be on the same order as x gets really large, but now we're going to do a little bit more of a formal demonstration of this. So one example you might have in the homework, eventually on a quiz or a test, would be to show that 3x squared plus 25 is on the order of x squared, or big O of x squared. Now there are a lot of different ways to do this. Um, the, the important thing to understand here is in the definition, there just have to exist constants c and k. Okay? Now, if you study this in more detail, there may be some logic as to choosing a quote-unquote good C or good K, but really all we need to satisfy the definition is some C and some K. I'm going to do this example first with just some sort of basic exploration ideas so you could sort of see the concept, but then we're going to come up with a more routine procedure that will uh, work efficiently and be easy to reproduce. Okay, so because of the numbers here, Let's just take a look at what would happen when x equals 5. Let's take a look at what 3x squared plus 25 would be, right? If x equals 5, this would end up being 3 times 5 squared plus 25, which would be 75 plus 25, which would equal 100, okay? So when x equals 5, this function 3x squared plus 25 is 100, okay? Now the question is, what constant times x squared would be greater than or equal to 100? Right? And this would mean 25c would have to be greater than or equal to 100, so c would be greater than or equal to 4, just dividing by 25 on both sides. Okay? So what we really did here was come up with a k value, 5, and a c value, 4. If we let c equal 4 and k equal 5, we can be pretty confident here 
that 3x squared plus 25, which is our f of x, is less than or equal to 4 times x squared when x is greater than 5. Okay? Now, right now we just showed that these are equal at 5, but what do you think is going to happen when x gets bigger? Well, adding 25 is okay, but multiplying by 4 is going to have a bigger impact on x squared than adding 25, especially once we get past x equals 5. So just for, by exploration, if we look at what happens when x equals 6, if you take the time to plug this into your calculator, 3x squared plus 25 will end up equaling 133, and 4x squared will equal 144, and this will continue to be the case. 4x squared, once you get past x equals 5, will always be bigger than 3x squared plus 25. Okay, so you found constant c equals 4 and k equals 5 here that make sure that this x squared function is always greater than 3x squared plus 25 when you multiply it by 4 and go past x equals 5. Okay? Now, just because of the nature of these numbers, I happen to think about the number 5 and see that this would be a nice way to go, but we have other options. And what I'm going to do is do this again in a little bit easier fashion that'll be, well, it'll be easier to reproduce. Uh, and it's a nice little method that always works. Okay, so let me clear off what we just did, and we will try this again in a slightly different fashion. Okay, so let's think about the function 3x squared plus 25. All right, what would happen if we bumped that 25 up to 25x squared? Okay, basically we're going to bring every term in the initial polynomial up to the highest degree. How do you think these two would compare? 3x squared plus 25 compared to 3x squared plus 25x squared. Well, this should be greater than or equal to the 3x squared plus 25x squared once x gets greater than 1. Now you have to keep in mind that if x is between 0 and 1, x squared is actually less than x, right? Think about a half times a half, right? A half squared equals a quarter, which is actually less than a half. So the reason we have to go beyond 1 is to make sure we don't end up with a scenario like this. Okay? But we know that 3, 3x squared plus 25 should be less than or equal to 3x squared plus 25x squared as long as x is greater than 1. Okay, so how does that help us? Well, since we bumped everything up to the highest exponent here, highest degree, now we can call this 28x squared. So we should feel confident that 3x squared plus 25 will always be less than or equal to 28x squared as long as x is greater than 1. Okay? So what we really have here is our c equals 28 and our k equals 1. The absolute values are sort of unnecessary, but if it's true in its own right, it should certainly be true as an absolute value. Okay? And this will be an easier, more direct way to show all the time, find the C and the K values for the big O notation. All the basic strategy is bump everything in this initial polynomial up to the highest degree, and then you should be pretty confident that bumping everything up to a higher power will make you bigger as long as X is greater than 1. So when we do these examples, we'll always come up with a K equal 1, but we'll have a different C value for each function. So algebraically, that's what's going on, but let's also take a look at this visually. Here's a graph of 28x squared, and here's a graph of 3x squared plus 25. You could get out a graphing calculator, or you could use a website calculator like desmos.com, uh, and you could quickly see that the 28x squared is at, uh, once you get past x equals 1, the 28x squared will remain larger than 3x squared plus 25. Okay? So while the book may show different values for C and K, the fact that we only need to find any C or K that work, we don't always have to match the examples they do. They might choose to always make the C one higher than this leading exponent. We could show, just like we did the first time around, that 3x squared plus 25 is less than or equal to 4, but then it takes much more work to come up with the constant K. This method 
gives you a much higher C value, but makes the K value easy to find. And since all we need is existence of C and K, we might as well make our lives easier.